I'm a kind of a singer-songwriter, a bit of a guitarist, a bit of a poet, a bit of a performer, a bit of a songwriter. I released a few albums in the early 80s, the kind of culty kind of albums, you know, quirky songs, you know. Uh, I love people. I'm actually a spiritual traveller, and it's all just a guise to try and get connection with people, really. I love that. You do your best to try and do it the best you can and then it gets out there. And some of these albums like Bought to Bolivia and Gladsome Humor and Blue are 30 years old and we're celebrating their 30th anniversary so they'll have probably meant something to students in Bedsit land. Uh, you know when I got into songs I suddenly realized there could be little capsules that you could put blessings in or um, you don't have to put pompous things in there you can put like little messages or healing. Th I saw them as healing mechanisms when I was young. I was very, very intense about the power of song. She gathered up the whole collection, paid the banners with her purse in there. Pet ponies in the downbeat challenge, she rolled them up into a ball, she did. See you watching in the middle aged teens, see your feet on the blood red crown, yeah. She starts to kill in the purest fields, eh? Left us to post 20, I won't be there. Left us to burn. One day ships will never sail from Hannah. The big black god is under siege. I shoot a pistol on to see your pet road. She flicked the spark into their breeze. I see her watching in the middle of the street and see her feet on the blood red ground. Starts killing in the poorest fields, eh? Left us to burn. The performance side of things is the fun, you know. If you've got a repertoire, you can go out and work, and it's a lovely feeling, you know. The dainties, specifically, but we were in the early 60s music, I suppose, and we were punks, ex punks, and all that. I was doing gigs with Prefab Sprout at the same time as them in 1978. So we were all floating around the green-eyed children and all that. Our big vision was to go through the 80s because the technology was developing and it was to make timeless music. So if you used acoustic guitars and, and Hammond organs and organic things, the more chance to sound and timeless. Everywhere we wander, everywhere our spirits roam, Everywhere we wander, love will guide us home. Even through the strongest winds, far from our darkest sin, there's a light 
and it shines within us. They call it home. Home isn't always that house you were born. It's just a light where love is strong. Everywhere we wander. Playing live's magical. Well, to me, it means a lot because uh, it's not about taking power; it's about distributing it and about being a, a conduit for it and getting raising the energy, the spirit, recognizing the collective spirit because it's not just me and it's not just you; it's everybody. So my job's a little bit of a fool, a little bit of a, an excuse, a, bit, a log for the fire. You know, anything to just get it going, then we can all share it. To me, that's the goal. To me, I always saw like uh, the stage is like Alan Sugar's office or a platform show for short people trying to take the world over. The traditional stage people, demigods. But if you if you put someone into that situation with an altered perception or a spiritual awareness, they'll not play that role. They'll they'll put the lights on and share the energy and, and jump off the stage. The I used to always jump off the stage. It's having that freedom. I still love village halls. But I never have this thing like, well, one day everything will be just perfect and I'll, they'll all be quiet and I'll be in control. Because you end up with Shirley Bassey. My wife, she up and she left me Out in this wide world alone Was with sadness and glad that she left me Or she left me, ain't no home but home So I sat down and wrote her in front I see you We have a joke with the dainties. I mean, the dainties, if you join the dainties and you play the dainties, you end up as a great player. Because I completely give them power, trust them. I never tell people what to play. I'll play with anybody. Because sometimes somebody who's a compatible person might not be the best musician in the world. So I'm, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. Like with the dainties, it was a democracy from day one. Every, I mean, I'm a kind of boss in a way, but the kind of boss that you could sit down and say, Martin, you're an asshole here. Like, so to me, it's a, it's a family, very family thing. Same with audience or musicians. I always develop relationships with musicians. Um, and they've, some of them have gone on for years and years, you know. <laughs> To feel good and feel like you feel like you were valid, validated, and feel like you were heard and, and felt, and that you were important, that you were there, and, you, and also entertained, and, and but definitely validated and felt that you were, your presence was felt, and you were part of it. To me, that's the success of it, if because it, it, it was all energy. Them, 
like Glastonbury and the Americana Festival, the celebrations of people in large groups. And that's bigger than the artists, you know, it's, it's a collection of people who love music and they're all coming together for a reason. It's also feeding the community, local acts hopefully are getting the chance to play. And I remember when I was 17, I would be watching a band on it at, at the Elton Square Green or something and think, oh God, that must be great to be able to play music, you know. And, and you, you just see the whole heal, healing thing of it and that. And uh, So I think festivals are phenomenal, they're ancient practices, you know. <laughs> Mark. No, I can't oh, the dainties. The dainties. Oh, it's Unbelievable. terrible, isn't it? I know, it doesn't sound very tough, does it? It's as good as Lindisfarne. Nah, look at that, man. How, how do you compete? How do you yeah. compete with that? 120 occasions. I like to hear Bandley. Ah, they're proper, you know. Pubs. But we're, we're a bit younger than them, so yeah. our bass player could cuff their bass player, like, you know, so right. we've got a bit of a chance. <laughs> look down! Speak loud! Look down! Speak loud! off an idea of this very like, highbrow snobby kind of music night where there would be like a classic album and this the kind of snobby kind of arty bunch and they're right and just see them now so I thought I'm going to do a council house version of that so instead of the big house the big hi-fi and all that I get a dance set stick it in the back of the car and just turn up and uh, connect and have a laugh and then do a little chat about the album, not over the top, you know, we'll answer any questions anybody's interested in about the recording. It? So it's stuff like that and then we'll play side one and then pop into the kitchen, a little bit of food, wherever they're having and uh, play side two and then do 20 minutes, half an hour music, say goodnight. And so it's a kind of very intimate, but it, it's a celebration of that is an album that's meant something to people growing up as students or having their kids. Or, and it's a way of actually being in the same place and thanking them and, uh, and it's a creative way to tour as well. <laughs> 